what we're looking at here is either an L9 or a U1 fault. They normally relate to the same thing. So an L9 specifically is when you've got a flow sensor and that flow rate has dropped below the minimum, which is normally five liters per minute. U1 fault is actually a high pressure fault on the actual Ekadan unit itself, at which point the high side of the system has gone above its limits of 41.5 bar. And the reason for that is normally because you're not moving the energy from the refrigerant to the water circuit because the water circuit is either slow or limited. So what we're going to do, we're going to work our way through it. So having a look at that water circuit, we're going to go through looking for if there's any restrictions on it, has anyone played back with any of the valves? Is any of the pipe work damaged? Um, have the pump speeds been played with? Is there a blockage in one of the strainers or filters? If it's a strainer or something like that, you're going to probably need to get in touch with your heating engineer to come and have a look at that. So just checking pumps, strainer, and any of the valves, make sure they're all open. So you can see here, we're just checking the valves, make sure they're open. Normally you would see those pipes lagged as well. I've left them all exposed for training purposes. So one of the things I would be checking is that water pressure, just to make sure that's at least 1.6 bar. Also checking whether we've got any air in the system by doing this as well. If you think there's air in the system, make sure your AAVs are open. Let any air out of the system. Obviously, once you've got the air out of the system, we can then close those caps off. So checking the filter, take the magnet out of the top. So any ferrous material is now going to drop to the bottom of that filter. I've got the system not running at this moment in time. Um, you can close off the isolation valves. You don't necessarily need to. Take the fitting off the bottom, which is going to act as a key for your valve. And be careful so you can have some water pressure behind that. That's probably enough to flush that through. Bear in mind, obviously you've lost a little bit of water pressure now. I'm just going to top that pressure back up. Bring that water pressure back up to 1.6 bar to suit the pumps. And we'll inspect that water just to look at any forms of debris or dirt or anything else we need to worry about in the system. What we're going to do here is we're going to check the actual flow rate. So I'm going to press the reset on there. So there's that L9 fault. And I'll show you how to get to the actual flow rate side of things. So into the service menu. Four zeros. into running information and we're going to put in a code here of 540. 540 is a way of looking at the actual flow rate. Give that a tick and there you can see we've got zero at this moment in time. If you think the pump speed's been set incorrectly, into the menu button, into the service menu, four zeros, And we go down to pump speed. And you can see that the higher the number, the higher the flow rate. So that's the hot water side and that's the heating. I'd normally start with those nice and high to start off with. You can always reduce them if you need to, but the more flow we've got, what we're after there's around about five to seven degrees between the flow and return temperatures on the actual system. So that's what we're aiming for. So I'd start at a nice high flow rate. If you're achieving better than at five to seven degrees difference between that flow and return, it's getting lower than that five to seven degrees, then I'd drop down the actual pump speed. Another way of checking into this is on the FTC6, you've got the option of the commissioning wizard. So give it a tick. And you can see on there, over time, how I've been playing about with this particular system because I've been causing problems for it. So as you can see there, it dropped right down to zero when I was playing about with it. And we're now come back up to say 14 liters per minute on this particular unit. But obviously it's gonna vary dependent on your unit. The bigger the unit, the higher the flow rate. So that's dealing with a U1 fault or an L9 fault. I'll say if you've 
gone through that process of working your way through that pipe work and you can't see any issues with it and the pump speeds all seem to be correct and you're still getting this issue, please do phone the after sales and we'll go through some other potential ideas.